everyone, it's Hannah here and thanks for coming to my channel. Today I'll be giving you guys my first impression review and tutorial of the new Matte Coco collection from KKW Beauty. I will also be going ahead and swatching some of the shadows just because you guys can make your decision whether or not you want to pick anything up from their Matte's collection. Now before we get into this video, make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and make sure you click that notification bell button so you're notified on when a new video goes up. And without further ado, you guys, let's just go straight into this video. So I I went ahead and picked up only two things from the entire mattes collection. I didn't want to overkill and buy something I know I'm probably not going to use. So I went ahead and picked up the matte cocoa palette. I'm trying to be more financially smart about what I do because makeup really gets you. And then I also made sure to pick up a lipstick from also the Matte Coco collection and this is in the shade 90s Glam. I really like the color of the packaging. It's very pretty. I like this very chocolatey brown shade almost with a red undertone. I really like it. I think it's very sleek, very pretty. The Matte Coco palette, like all her other palettes, retails for $45 with only 10 eyeshadows. So that's how it looks right there. And then her lipsticks caught retail for $18. This is actually in her new matte lipstick formula, which is the first time she's bringing matte lipsticks because she only has the cream lipsticks, which I really enjoy. Her cream new lipsticks have to be one of my favorites. So I'm really excited to share with you guys what I think about the matte one. I normally don't do swatches just because I just really don't really care for swatches. I like to really play with the product and use it to get a good idea. But I've gotten some feedback from you guys and you guys really want me to swatch the shadows for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna swatch it just one little swipe because you know, we know the case with some swatches. Let's pick some up and put it so you guys see the color. And they do have the labeling on the back, which I mean, I'd rather prefer have the names in the front, but honestly, whatever. I'm gonna go ahead and swatch this shade right here, and that is cream. I'm only gonna take just a little bit. It's really, really light. That's it right there. I don't know if it, the camera is picking it up. The shade Desert, this one right here. You can kind of see the first one, which is the shade Cream, and this one right here is Desert. This is in the shade Tawny. Again, I'm only gonna take a little bit to show you guys how they look. And boom. Sienna. I'm definitely picking up way more pigment than her previous palette. And then I'm gonna go in with Bourbon right here. Now I'm gonna go in with the second row, Sandstone. This is in Sandstone. Shade Honey. I'm just gonna take some. And that's how Honey looks. Shade Bamboo. I don't think I lowered this enough. That's what Bamboo looks like. Coco right here. The last shadow in this palette is called Wood, which is this very deep brown right here. And that's what that is. So it's a little bit more of a cool tone brown shade compared to Coco. But there you have it, you guys. That is the shadow of this entire palette. Again, I don't really care for swatches just because swatches don't really... I don't really get much information from swatches. I guess you can just kind of see the, sh the color of the shades and how they look on your skin tone. But that is the palette. Without further ado, guys, let's just go straight into this tutorial. And I'll show you guys how you can achieve this look using this palette. And then right after that, I'll get straight to how I feel about the Matte Collection by KKW Beauty. But make sure to watch the rest of the video before you... Don't just skip to the end, you guys. Watch the video. But all right, guys. Let's get into this. All right, you guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and pick up that shade Tawny on this JS8 brush color right here. Apply this as my transition slash like my main crease shade, if that makes sense. And then you can kind of build it up to what, however much you want. Now I'm gonna go into the shade Bourbon, which is this one right here. Apply it all over the main right part of my lid up until right where the shade I just applied started. I'm gonna take this JS, JS11 brush, which is a great packer brush, and start to pack it on the lid just because we do want the most saturated amount of pigment on this area. And I, re I totally recommend working in little sections just to make sure just because it is such a deep shade it can you can definitely mess up very easily so i always kind of recommend working in little sections little by little but of course personal preference whatever you're comfortable with that's always my main thing is you go with comfort do what you're comfortable with 
Now, as you can see, we do have a harsh, you know, line between your transition shade and the lid shade. So we're gonna blend that out, kind of smoke it out a little bit. And we're gonna go in with this shade right here, Yana, and we're gonna kind of blend it and soften the edges of the shadow we just applied. And I'm gonna take this brush right here, which is the JS9 brush. I like that it's a little tapered at the end. It's almost like a gradient effect, right? That's what you're trying to accomplish. It's like a smooth, seamless gradient transition, right, into color. You can always go back, apply, and then blend out again, you know, to your liking. An old I use tape, so I'm just gonna apply some tape right here. And, you know, hold on, let me fix the angle a little bit. One at a certain angle. This is the part where you're gonna use an eyeliner to create that wing liner, and it's not as bold as a liquid liner, but it's definitely there. So I'm gonna use this Morphe pie pencil right here in the shade Dark Room, and I'm just gonna kind of go along the tape and take it in right there, as you can see. So that's what I'm doing. After applying that, you can definitely take, like, I'm going to take this brush right here, just JS10. I'm just going to smudge it out just a little bit, not too much, just because I personally just like a cleaner look. Just to make sure the liner stays in place, you want to go ahead and apply a shadow over it. So I'm going to go back into the palette. I'm going to take the shade Wood on this crown brush. It's C513. Looks like that. And I'm going to just apply that and just go over where I applied the shadow to make sh where I applied the liner, I mean, and just make sure it doesn't budge. And again, you can kind of smudge it out a little bit too with this the shadow part. So you can kind of like I'll go over it like this, like so, and just make it a little bit more, you know. I never said I was a professional. You came to this video because you wanted to. I did not say, I did not make any claims of being a professional. I think you could tell that too. So now you're the part where you can go ahead and remove the tape. And you can just see there, it creates such a precise, but smoked out line. I really like how it looks. Now, I'm just gonna do this just because I'm just some, I'm that person. I'm gonna go back in with the shade Bourbon on that same packing brush, and I'm just gonna just quickly go over the center of the lid just to make sure it's as deep as I want it to be. That's just me being extra, so. I'm gonna go ahead and finish applying the rest of my makeup and then I'll be right back so we can finish the rest of my eyes. So yeah, give me one second. All right guys, I went ahead and finished applying my foundation, concealer, bronzer. So we just have to apply some shadow on the lower lash line. Yeah, so let's get to that. I'm gonna go back in with the palette and I'm gonna take shade Coco and I'm gonna use that and I'm gonna apply that on my lower lash line. I'm gonna use this JS12 brush right here. And I just wanna take it right there. I don't want it to be too intense, just a light swoop of color. Now I am noticing this shadow, Coco, does have a little bit more kickback than the other shadows that I used, but that doesn't bother me. Honestly, that doesn't really bother me at all. Um, I'm not a huge, I'm like I'm not a crazy about Fallout, like it doesn't bother me. Buff that out a little bit more, creating more of like a smoked out effect of that color. Just because I think that's the only color I'm going to use on my lower lash line. Just because it is such a pretty color and I think it kind of brings it all together without being too overpowering. I'm going to go ahead and line my waterline just because I do want this look to be a little bit intense. Just because that's kind of what I'm going for. This is a very good look for really night out. And for me, it's just like, I'm ready for fall. I'm waiting to start like doing fall looks. So generally speaking, when I do a look like this, I like to just line my eyes, tight line them. I think it just, you know, finishes the look. I'm gonna go ahead and apply lashes and then we will talk about the lipstick. You guys, I went ahead and finished putting the lashes as well as the mascara. Let's go ahead and move on to the lipstick. So I went ahead and got the 90s Glam Lipstick 
this is how it look it's more of like that pinchy the pinchy that peachy nude color that's the one i went for so i'm really excited for it before i apply this so i did not pick up any of the lip liners just because i do have quite a few lip liners from kkw beauty that i already love and that i use but however i did realize that the ones that I have from Kiki I don't really want to pair it with this one. So I'm going to use a different lip liner. This one is from Morphe. It is in the shade Sweet Tea. I thought this one would just go so much better with the 90s glam lipstick I got. So I'm not lying my lips. I personally really love this shade. Sweet Tea is so pretty and... I just thought it would go so well with them. Let's go ahead and apply. And this is a new formula. It's a matte lipstick um, compared to her creamy lipstick. So it's not... So let's see how it looks. I don't... It's the first time using this formula from KKW Beauty. Oh yeah, this definitely does feel matte. Okay, so not bad. I really actually like how the lips look. I will say though, is it definitely looks a lot more peachier in person than it did online, but not mad with it. But alrighty guys, that is the complete look using the new matte collection from KKW Beauty, specifically the matte cocoa palette and the matte lipstick in 90s glam. Now, what are my final thoughts about the palette and the lipstick. So let me just quickly get over the lipstick. But I was a little worried because when I was applying this, it did feel a little bit more drying than one of my normal matte lipsticks feel. But now that I've had it on for almost an hour now, it definitely is very lightweight. Um, it doesn't feel like too crazy. The color's really pretty. The only thing I have about KKW Beauty is the discrepancies between how the lipstick shades look. So on the, when I was trying to figure out which lipstick shade I wanted, I was having a really hard time figuring out which one I wanted to pick. It was between the 90s glam or there was like the 90s runway sh shade or something like that. I just can never tell the shade that I'm going to get from KKW because I guess however they edit their pictures or whatever filter they use, it really messes up with the true color of the shade. So I wasn't really sure what I was getting and I had to look a lot on her Instagram stories to kind of see people swatches. And I kind of saw that this one had like a peachy tone to it, but it didn't look as peachy as it does when I opened it and put it on my lips. But I really do like this lip color. I think this is a really, really pretty lip color on me. I really enjoyed it. I think I'm gonna be wearing it a lot. So overall, I really like the lipstick. It's not bad. I just really wish KKW Beauty wouldn't create such discrepancies between of how their tr the true colors are of their lipsticks. And I've had that issue with their, you know, their cream lips as well whenever I buy new. Now I know which one I like and which ones I want. But I feel like for someone that's never tried their lipsticks, and especially since they only sell online, I feel like they need to maybe not filter the, the, sh the actual color of the lipsticks too much. But overall, I think it is a really pretty lipstick and it does retail for $18. Now moving on to the main thing, which I think you guys are more interested in, which is the Matte Coco palette packaging i mean i really love this like chocolate cocoa color it's really pretty i really like the color i feel like it won't even you know get too dirty because i do have a classic palette and that one tends to get dirty from the outside i always wiping it this one doesn't look bad i really like the little matte thing right there the color story is really perfect for everyday shadows to create a smoky effect very like just simple looks i think this is a great palette for someone who's really into wearing just everyday makeup if you're not too big on doing crazy looks or colors or just super intricate eyeshadow like looks i think this is perfect but you can also incorporate this in those really crazy shadows as well um i would but i definitely would recommend this palette for somebody that just wants like an everyday palette they can use for work school they can even do a very glam look like this one you can definitely intensify the look i guess the only thing that really gets me is i really love kkw beauty's eyeshadow formula their formula is great i really love their shadows they're not patchy they're super easy to blend i feel like anyone from beginner to a pro can use these shadows and really enjoy them they're very pretty and 
just easy to use shadows and the fallout it's barely there it's crazy because a lot of times most shadows you don't even feel like you pick it up until you go on your eyes and you're like whoa pigment um but i just feel like the price range right it's 45 dollars. the only reason why i wouldn't recommend this palette is because i feel like for you know an everyday eyeshadow palette you're really not looking to spend 45 dollars. i mean there's definitely a lot of other eyeshadow palettes in the market that cost a little less that do have the same kind of color story and a lot of times i feel like most of us have we don't really tend to use one palette we tend to use maybe two palettes or three palettes for a look but if you are looking for an everyday palette that you can just only use one palette if you need to take like travel i feel like this is a really good palette if you don't care for shimmers you just want to keep those matte neutral warm shades this is definitely great for that i personally really love this palette i see myself using this palette a lot and incorporating a lot of shadows with other palettes because i like to mix and match my palettes and shadow price wise though i wouldn't recommend it if you're looking for an everyday palette on you know and you can definitely find something more cheaper but if you don't mind spending the money you know that's your money do what you got it zoo you know but alright guys that is it for this video i hope you enjoyed it and let me know if you guys are going to be picking anything up from the mattes collection from kkw beauty either it be the cocoa palette the smoke collection let me know down in the comment section below make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already because i do post new videos here every week also make sure to click that notification bell button so you're notified when a new video goes up also, make sure to follow me over at Instagram at the Henna Ali because I'm always on Instagram literally every day. So make sure to follow me there. But all right, guys, that is it for this video, and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Making money like a man.